we need to start seasonal. That's coming up. Lunar New Year is typically, as Has was pointing out, a big you know time when a billion trips um, is, is 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 typical for for us in news to talk about those headlines. Uh, what are your expectations for for this year? So unfortunately, with the resurgence of the pandemic, especially in mainland China. Uh, I really do think this year's lunar new, lunar new Year will be quite disappointing, unfortunately, for the airlines. Um, we are expecting a rather large drop in demand from what we forecasted earlier. And really, all of this means that instead of um, Chinese mainland traffic returning to what we saw in 2019, um, by January, February, we are now expecting a full recovery by um, second quarter even later. So this is a much more delayed timeline than what we had thought. And unfortunately, this does mean that for share performance for the Chinese airlines, um, they will be trending slightly lower than what we expected as well. All right. But you still have a buy recommendation on all three. Uh, put that together with, I guess, I would imagine at some point you're going to have to revise some of these revenue forecasts lower. Yeah, we do have a buy recommendation. And that's because we think at least for the long term, even considering the full year of 2021, uh, we think the outlook for the Chinese airlines are rather still optimistic. They're very good. Um, the only issue right now is maybe it's a very short term thing. So first quarter and maybe a little bit into second quarter, we may see a little bit of a decreased performance, both in shares and also in revenue. But um, if we're looking at the full year, we are expecting vaccines, say, by mid-year. And by the second half, we are seeing a very, very fast recovery, at least in the mainland market. So all of that put together, it's still a much better picture than what we saw in 2020. How about Cathay, Luia? Did you upgrade Cathay from neutral to buy too soon, given the on-again, off-again restrictions we're seeing uh, pretty much in, in Hong Kong? And uh, it's still an issue. So we did upgrade Cathay when we thought that there would be more of a boost, at least from the vaccine distribution. And now we are seeing, unfortunately, that that's also uh, a little bit restricted because of the quarantine measures. Um, however, overall, like with the Chinese airlines, we think full year outlook for Cathay Pacific is still a lot better than 2020. And also, we are also looking at the long term potential, which is Cathay is looking at a lot fewer competitors in the long run. They're looking at a much better market for their expansion. And they also have very, very strong liquidity, actually, compared to a lot of peers in Asia Pacific. So all of these put together, they're still very well positioned. Uh, the only issue is that little bump that we were expecting from vaccine distribution, from that cargo demand and cargo revenue, um, is now going to be a lot lower, unfortunately, due to the quarantine. There's likely another bump as well, crew quarantine. I mean, what does it mean for Cathay's cash burn? So they, uh, Cathay Pacific forecasted something like 300 and 400 million Hong Kong dollars on top of their current cash burn, which, uh, to be honest, it is exactly, it puts them back exactly where they were at the start of 2020 before the restructuring. So this uh, new quarantine me measures essentially erases the savings that they've made from the massive restructuring that they undertook last year it was a little is it's a little bit unfortunate. But Cathay Pacific did say that they are looking into different measures or looking into ways to possibly schedule staff in a way that um, their cargo and passenger businesses won't be as affected. Um, but if we're really just looking at the face of it, the 14 day quarantine, the seven day uh, medical surveillance, a lot of it is very, very impactful for a company whose staff has already been very much cut down since the last of last year. Yeah, and you know, our, we're just flashing this on the screen. Our guys at Bloomberg Intelligence are, are estimating that, yeah, to your point, liquidity, they're okay until the end, I think the end, April 2022. Is that also your expectation that they won't need to raise money, assuming nothing changes, of course, between now and then, that uh, there will be no need for Cathay to raise uh, any cash? Our current estimates do place that at current liquidity, they definitely have enough money until the end of this year. Um, if we're looking at something like maybe the market isn't recovering as quickly as uh, the company hopes it might, we might look at more fundraising measures maybe around the end of this year. But definitely in terms of current liquidity, they have enough until the end of this year and a little bit into 2022 as well. So um, if we're expecting vaccine distribution to really gain speed in the second half of this year, then I would say that Cathay definitely has enough room to breathe in terms of liquidity.
The recovery has been slower than expected. Uh, you know, people are talking about a recovery in summer. That's not likely to happen. Uh, will that mean consolidation within the aviation sector, the, the industry in Hong Kong, you think? Will the smaller players uh, go bankrupt? Uh, well, within Hong Kong specifically, there already aren't very many smaller players, unfortunately. It's been a very tough few years for Hong Kong's aviation market. Um, we've seen already the smaller airlines either cut down on operations or be absorbed wholesale. So for Hong Kong itself, I really don't see how much else it can kind of restructure and change. Um, but for the general regional aviation, definitely, there will definitely be consolidations, there will definitely be acquisitions, because as it stands right now, the entire industry is um, essentially too big for the market that there is right now. And as a result, a lot of the bigger airlines with the bigger cash reserves, they will most likely buy up some of the smaller ones, and the smaller ones will either exit the market or be acquired. So what we're looking at is going to be a tighter market. We're going to be looking at fewer airlines to choose from and potentially even higher airfares for normal passengers after the whole pandemic. Now, Louia, very quickly, I never thought I was going to say this. I miss eating airline food. When do you think the next time that's going to be for me and for many people in the world? <laughs> I think right now we're all really, really desperate to get back in the air. Um, my tentative estimates for global travel, for any kind of international travel, is I think by the second half of this year in Hong Kong, there might be some signs of a slow, kind of a very small move into that area. Um, it's hard to say right now what it will actually look like, but I think with the vaccine distribution, um, there will be systems in place that will help people travel if they want to. And hopefully, hopefully it'll be fairly easy for people like you and me.